I'm Alec Mosk and I'm the new professor physics of light in complex systems or as we call it nanolinks. We look at how light propagates uh, in what we call complex systems and complex systems are really systems that we don't know how to describe in detail. Now if you want to look at things in a large amount of detail um, you have to process an enormous amount of information. Uh, so we do this in experiments where actually computers and information technology are an integral part of the, uh, of the optical setup. Uh, once the computer figures out where the constructive interference actually happens, it can control things and it can make the constructive interference happen more strongly. Examples of such systems are uh, paper, which contains very, very many small fibers and we really don't know where every fiber is. We still do want to know how does the light uh, make its path through a piece of paper. Uh, if we know that in detail, uh, we are able to look through the piece of paper as if it were clear. Sitting down with pencil and paper, writing down the equations for how light is transported. And we were looking some years ago at how quantum states of light are transported in uh, scattering uh, materials. And when I looked at that closely, uh, I realized that there is a solution where the uh, the, there is a, a well-known solution where the light comes in in a nice beam and it gets scattered to a uh, completely disordered uh, speckle pattern. Uh, and the same equations also allow for a solution where the light comes in in a way that looks very disordered but is not. Uh, and then after scattering comes out as a nice beam. Actually it was quite unbelievable uh, because initially we thought, okay, we're going to try this. Nobody has ever done this before. So maybe we will see the light get brighter by 1% or maybe even by 10%. Uh, but right the first time when we ran the experiment, the, the brightness of the light uh, increased by a factor 10. And not much later, we had a factor 100. Usually, if you're looking for an effect and you're doing an experiment, you get a result which is weaker than you expect. And it's very rare and I don't think I've ever before seen an effect that's much stronger than what we expected uh, beforehand. So this maybe just shows that our expectations were too modest initially. <laughs> well, my son uh, actually uh, looks at it and says, hey, this is cool. Uh, my father knows how to look through paper, but we still felt this as a very, very pleasant surprise. No, I don't, I don't think I'm a very organized person. Uh, I think um, uh, in, uh, at least not in all aspects. Research is quite a lot about getting stuck and getting unstuck. Education is also a lot about getting stuck and getting unstuck. What I like, even if the research is stuck for a day, which sometimes happens, then I still like being around the young people, trying to get them unstuck. Uh, it's like a new challenge on top of the research challenge. And uh, sometimes people are, in research is like that, that people sometimes are stuck for a while. Uh, and then you have to come up with a plan. Uh, because, of course, if you have four years to do a research project and you stay stuck for four years, uh, it's not going to end very well. So you have to get unstuck and you have to think of new ways to, uh, to get where you want to be. And sometimes you even have to think of new goals. And this all uh, poses a set of, of very, very unique challenges that are really special about the university environment. Teach people to do their reasoning well. Is science a personal endeavor? I don't completely agree. Uh, so science is a structure uh, where uh, as a scientist you ask your own questions and you find your own answers. But this is first and foremost a path of learning for yourself. Uh, and so students will learn uh, 
how to find the correct facts and act on the correct facts. Uh, and not all students from my group or from this university uh, go and become scientists. Many become engineers or uh, work in industry or develop products. And there, to do that successfully, you need the same. You need to take the same steps, because your product will only work if you base it on the correct facts. Um, then again, uh, so scientists are a little bit the guardians of critical thinking. Uh, critical thinking is something that we really, really need in our society. Critical thinking is not always easy, and it's not always easy even for, for scientists. So there are a few scientists who completely lose their way and make up data uh, or, uh, or knowingly publish false conclusions, but these are really the exceptions. Uh, what does happen, uh, of course, and this is very natural, uh, is that n not everyone is very critical about their own work and uh, therefore you might actually come to wrong conclusions without realizing it yourself uh, and uh, of course in that case you may uh, uh, yeah you may publish data that that go in the direction where you really really want to go uh, where you were you, you, you get the uh, you, you may get the results that you hoped you would get instead of the things uh, instead of the results that actually are there well there's one task which really stands out above everything which is to educate students and educate them well and even if you uh, i mean research uh, i always see as basically a means to keep your education uh, a means to motivate your education, a means to, uh, to also um, essentially, it's the ultimate test of your education system as well. Uh, if you can do research well on a world level, then it means you also, uh, if your students are able to do research on, a, uh, on the world scale, uh, then it means you've educated them well enough. I think the main question is how much do you want to guide students and prescribe what education they take and how much do you want to just give them opportunities. And both extremes are wrong, I think. You don't want to uh, have students sit through school and make them uh, take, uh, uh, what do you call them, uh, make them take uh, prescribed courses. Uh, you also don't want to give them complete freedom uh, because uh, and this is maybe a bit the sign of the times uh, there's only limited time that the students can spend in the university uh, we want to uh, educate them so that they can get on with their career and contribute to society and not keep them in the university for a very very long time uh, so that means that there will be there will need to be some guidance uh, essentially to keep them going uh, but I think for a university to be worth its name there must also be freedom to explore for the students physics is very distinctive and the reason is that uh, physics has a very, very well-defined set of core skills that define a physicist. Uh, if you know how to work with mechanics, with uh, electrodynamics, if you can do quantum mechanics, if you can solve the wave equations, um, and if you know a little bit about sig uh, signal recovery and the design of, of experiments and, and good, uh, good experimental practices, uh, then you have essentially this core set of courses. Having this core set of skills, which is very hard, I mean it's, a, it's, it's not an easy set of skills to acquire, uh, but once you have them you can almost work in every corner of the physics universe. 